Yeah, gang, you already know the vibes. Stay locked in. Stay locked in. Yeah, you know the vibes. Yeah. <laughs> gang, what's going on? Y'all know the vibes. It's your boy, Camille, Bake with another video. What's going on, gang? If you're new to the channel, thanks for hopping on. If you're not new to the channel, what's going on, gang? Y'all already know the vibes. Um, if you're new here, um, I'm Camille, a trans man from West Philly. Um, two, what, two years and one month into my transition. I got top surgery. I got a shirt on because I just left. I just came from the trip. I know I never had the shirt on, but, um, I got top surgery with Dr. Joshua Fosno at the University of Penn. Um, I'm one, what, one and a half, a year and a half, uh, post-op. Top surgery. I don't have bottom surgery yet. And today, you already see the top, the, the title of this video, just, we gonna just pause for a minute just to say stupid, gang. I don't know how the hell, well, I do know how I ran out of testosterone, but I think this like my second time, like, running out like this. Normally, I did, when I run out, or my prescription run out, or my refills run out, I just call my doctor up, yo, my shit ran out, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Like, do what you need to do. But at the end of the day, everything is a business. So yeah, respectfully, um, I gotta, I, I be doing so much. That's what I get. Like every time shit like this happen, I be like, that's what the fuck you did, dummy. Like you had one job. Keep your appointments. Do me get your let your uh my lead levels, my testosterone levels checked, and schedule a doctor's appointment. I've been doing so much in the last like two years that I kind of like I don't forget about my transition like I definitely take my testosterone every week but honestly I be forgetting like Tuesdays be coming and going I'm like dang I gotta take my shot but I try to do little different things to remind my dumb ass self to take my shot none of it seems to work so we gonna get better though but I did realize that I didn't take it on Tuesday call right eight up Right, hey, what's up? Need my prescription. With, I mean, my medicine. What's going on? They're like, oh, you ran out of testosterone, and we reached out to your doctor, and she ain't reached back out yet. You might want to call her. All right, cool. Give her a call. She like, well, I actually, I email my doctor back and forth because I like emailing and texting because I be having proof of what they say. I like the document, like shit like that, because like he all that over the phone, anybody can say anything. If she say, oh no, I didn't say that, I could be like, hey, go to text. He go to uh, email, but I normally just text, but like, I just was trying to keep it more professional. I'm like, listen, what's going on? At the end of the day, we want to, we call it speed to speed. All this shit is a business game. Do what I was supposed to do on my end. That, that means she don't do, she don't get paid or some shit like that. I don't know how it really go, but, um, I got to Monday. I'm going to take y'all with me. I'm going to let y'all vibe with me. I haven't got my, um, testosterone level checked in a minute. Excuse me. So that's just to make sure that my testosterone level is high and my estrogen level is low. You just gotta check. She gotta check and make sure. I haven't got it checked in a minute. That's just basically just drawing blood to see. Um, I haven't got it checked in a minute because y'all already know I be doing like a hundred million fucking things and certain things I just be forgetting. Like charge it to the game, gang. It's not my fault. Um, I know I'm, I'm gonna get better at this shit, gang. I'm, I'm definitely gonna get better because I have to. You feel me? For sure, I have to get better. I cannot just keep, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't wanna throw off, like, my, I don't wanna, it, I feel like being on T two years, it's not really, honestly, I don't think it's gonna take that long. Maybe a week before I get it. It's not gonna take, like, weeks at a time. But I'm already behind because I didn't take it on Tuesday. So stay tuned. You'll definitely see if my mood changes. The last time this happened, nothing really happened. Like, um, it wasn't too dramatic. So long as you know what don't show up, um, that thing that girls show up first of them, like, once a month, long as that don't happen, I'm, I'm sturdy. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm going to be okay because everything kind of happened in quick. I was supposed to get it on. What, I was supposed to get it, I called it Thursday, so Friday, I called, try to get all those appointments and shit, and they didn't give it to me till Monday, so, Monday I get the lead levels checked after, uh, I mean, I keep saying lead levels, 
my testosterone levels check. Um, then I gotta just make a doctor's appointment with her. She see me, then boom, she write the prescription. So hopefully I can get the appointment with her. It's not too booked up. She can fit me in one day next week. But y'all know COVID be dicky. And so COVID been making everything like take forever. So hopefully uh, I can get it, get in and get out. Uh, that Hopefully that appointment don't take too damn long. At the end of the day, that's all. It, that's just a matter of them checking it. I've been taking my testosterone every week. So it should be cool. She might want to raise it though. The last time she made me do this, she was saying that she might want to uh, raise it to a higher dose which would be love because I feel like, because I don't, I feel like this would get me, a higher dose would get me more pictures. Even though it's all genetics gang. Um, hopefully, I don't know. I, I really don't matter. Like one time I did have some extra tea um, in a bottle and I kind of um, took too much. So it didn't really do nothing. I mean, that was only one time. So, and the first time I actually started taking it, I, uh, I took too much. The rip, so it is what it is. I'm back on track. I just gotta right now. I ain't had none all week, so my last shot was last week and it was late. So I think it was like last Thursday. So last Thursday, I had my shot. I haven't had one this week at all. And then next week, I probably won't have another one. So I'm probably like two weeks behind. So we're gonna see what happened. I'm, I'm quite sure none of my the changes that I had, like. My mustache ain't gonna go away. My chin hair ain't gonna go away. My voice ain't going, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't gonna go back to how it was in a week or two weeks. It's, that's, a, that's a whole process. So, just vibe with me, game. Um, happy belated birthday to my niece, too. Excuse me, her birthday was yesterday. Um, if you knew here, my niece passed away uh, December the 1st, 2021. Um, she actually died right there. I normally do these videos downstairs in my stew, but I decided to vibe with y'all up here, but that's where she was at. That was where she took her last breath. Um, normally, I had like a, like the last year, her sister had, um, my other niece, had a balloon uh, release for her hair. I tried to get them to do it without me, I'm not gonna lie. I just feel like, like I'm healing. I'm going through the motions. I'm trying to make sure her daughters is okay. I don't really got time for all that balloon release shit. Like, y'all can handle that. But they waited for me to come home from work. So the balloon release wasn't until, like, 7, 8 o'clock at night. Um, so they just, I mean, call her daughter. Her other daughter is in Florida. So they just kind of call her daughter up and um, let her watch them. You know what I mean? Let the release the balloon. They said what they were going to say. Yesterday was her birthday. So just, like, uh, two years. Just, like... Two years since my niece been um had like birthdays since she haven't been here. She would be what 35 I think right now. Um so yeah, I just kinda I ain't feel like all that extra shit. And I'm not really talking to my family right now. Like I feel like I'm this I'm using this time to kind of mentally um just be okay without my mom. You feel me? Like it's just so many losing my mom inside it was kinda like the closest people that we lost. Um, on my mom's side of the family. So it's like, I mean, my mom was like the glue holding everything together. My niece and her was like, like how that toxic grandma and granddaughter relationship be. My mom raised her, so that situation was crazy. And now I'm raising Saida's daughter. So yeah, I don't really, I feel like Saida's in the sky, like yeah, high five nigga, it's cool, I don't need no balloons because the shit that I'm doing for her daughter, I'm not gonna say, a lot of people wouldn't do it, but I just I just know how people carry themselves and I know how people rule and I just know how people act in these situations. Like, you mean like they don't be giving a fuck about their kid. They just they be on a whole nother type of time. And it's like, damn, I didn't if you would have told me five, ten years ago that I would uh, be raised inside a daughter, I'd be like, yo, you shut the fuck up. You, what are you talking about, bro? Like I wouldn't even like what? Like me and Saida wasn't even that close. Like we definitely grew up together, but once she got grown, it was just like she was doing her thing in Florida. I'm doing my thing. She started. It's crazy because as soon as I transitioned, when I came out as trans, she was diagnosed with cancer. So it was like it was like a lot for my mom to even take in. So the whole time I'm transitioning, she like, oh, which woman call you unk now? And you really getting top surgery? I can't believe it, nigga. Like, I'm proud of you. 
I, she like, oh, when I get bottom surgery, I don't care. Like, you my family. I want to see it. I'm like, Saida, would you shut your freak ass up? <laughs> it is my niece. And we literally, like, we close in age. Like, I literally was one of them people. Like, my mom had me when she was older. So, me and Saida was, like, more like, that's the more like my little annoying ass sister than my niece. You feel me? Like, I was the little kid with, like, five years old with a niece trying to... Was we five years apart? I don't even know if we five years apart. Whatever. I was like five or something with um with a fucking niece. Like what the fuck? How how are we like how are you my niece, bro? This is weird. Most of the situations that I knew when I was little, when it was that close, they was either sisters or cousins. This is my niece. Like how the fuck I'ma tell her what to do? I'm five, bro. Like, but um, Sida kind of always looked up to me. She was always one of them like. She just was annoying. You know how annoying little sisters be. So it was more of that vibe. So now I feel like if my niece would have did more of her um, due, due diligence with her baby father, I wouldn't be going through half of the shit that I'm going through. But I guess a female females handle situations different. Um, I'm not talking down on the day. You feel me? Like Saida was 30. She did a lot of shit. But that whole baby father shit. One of her husbands, I mean one of her husbands. Oh, she had two um, baby fathers, not to put my niece business out there, but I'm just trying to tell you all the shit that I've been going through is the reason why I've been like kind of lacking as far as myself. Cause I've been dealing with a whole bunch of shit. Like I've been dealing with like a custody battle with me and Saida, the baby father. It's just, this is ghetto bro. Like I swear to God it's ghetto as shit. Like, especially coming from a nigga that take care of their kids. like. I don't have my daughter's hair right now, but I'm definitely an active parent. I do damn near. Only thing I don't do, like, my daughters now have, like, two households. We kind of, like, co-parenting now. Like, that's something that I, I wouldn't have signed up for either. If you would have told me fucking 10 years ago that once my daughter got 12, we'd be co-parenting, I would have just never signed up for the shit. Because, like, at first, it was, like, real, real ghetto. It was real. It was, like, a lot of, like... For me, it was more so like, I'm not used to not having control of my situation. Like, I'm not used to not coming home and my kids not being here. Like, I definitely, I'm a good parent, bro. Beyond anything I got to do with trans, like, I take care of my situation. No, I didn't birth my children, but I've been there from day one. From, like, I cut Kimura's umbilical cord, you feel me? Like, I literally was there. I spit up on the floor because I can't stomach a lot of shit, but I was there, you feel me? Like... So, like, it's just a whole lot of shit going on in my life right now. Whereas, though, it's the reason why I, I kind of, like, it's the reason why a lot of shit on my end, you know, I mean, real niggas always put themselves last. I've been trying to put myself first more because this is how I transitioned when I kind of just cut everybody off and just kind of started living for myself. I felt like everybody else was doing what was best for them. And then when it came to me, I'm like, well, shit, niggas ain't coming to me asking me for approval to do what they doing. So why the fuck am I sitting around not doing what I want to do? So I kind of, that's when I kind of fell my, my transition at the end of my self-love journey. Well, not the, at the end, but like in the middle of my self-love journey. So um, I'm trying to get back to that. It's kind of hard because co-parenting is ghetto, bro. Like if you're a trans man, the whole process of me just coming out as trans now uh, is living in my true, living my my true self, like walking in the, the the way that I designed myself. I can't say I was created this way, but I feel good this way. You feel me? Like I feel better. But like that process alone, to have already have children and ha and try to make them understand, it's kind of hard. So it's like not only did I transition and trying to make my daughters understand me and they they parent uh not together we gotta make we gotta make them understand she got a new situation i got a new situation and now i got custody of my niece so it's like you see how i kind of got lost in the mix of that like that's a lot because i'm going i'm regardless of what i'm gonna always make sure my daughter's is okay like regardless of what's happening what's going on hold on them two souls right there i'm going i'm i'm the one i'm the one like you know what i'm saying like Hey, mom, going. I'm not saying she don't do nothing. You feel me? Like we be back and forth with it. But when it comes to them two right there, y'all, yeah, y'all talk to me first. Like, what's going on? But, um, so that's a lot. So it's like I can't. I had to learn how to that I can't control 
another person's household because I was doing it. You feel me? Like it was like my way or no fucking way. But I, it, it just kind of, it was a lot. It's been a lot. I'm telling y'all, it's been a lot that I, before all this shit, like even before this, I was going through bullshit with they mom. So it's just like, I'm kind of used to bullshit at this point. So we had to step back. We had to take a step back because hold on, I'm lacking now. This is, this is the reason why I kind of snapped out like a couple years ago because it's like, I'm so used to taking care. Like I'm a provider. I'm, I'm used to making sure everybody cool. I'll be like, I'll worry about myself later. I eat last. Let me make sure all of them sturdy. You feel me? That's just how I grew up. That's how my brother was with me. That's how my stepfather was with me. So they kind of like instilled that in me. It's like, make sure your mom is good. Make sure your, your family good. So that's kind of what I've been doing. I didn't, like my guy sister asked me something like, well, it was like a year ago. My, my guy sister was like, hey, Mumu, do you know, like that my family call me Mumu. Y'all keep calling me Kamido. Like we not, don't call me Mumu, bro. Y'all can call me Mumu, but I really don't care. But like, I'm like, I'm a grown ass man. Like, you calling somebody Mumu is kind of crazy. But she like, Mumu, uh, did you know what you were signing up for when you uh, told Saida that you, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, fuck no. And I say fuck no then, and I say fuck no now. Like, now that my mom is gone, it's kind of like hard to like, when I come up with something, I just be like, listen, this is a decision that you make, you gotta stand on it. You feel me? I still be lit. I be sitting there sometimes laughing, like, what the fuck did I get myself into? Like, all I thought I was doing, I swear to God, bro, all I thought I was gonna have to ever have to do. Like, I came out as trans, my mom didn't even understand it. It was too much going on, and now I understand why. She was sick with cancer. Saida was sick with cancer. These just this is she raised Saida from the time she came out. Like she was there with Saida. And then I was transitioning. So I was just like, wait, what? Pause. What's happening? So all I thought I was gonna do, my mom never wanted to go nowhere, right? So I'm like, why is my mom in Florida? How did y'all even get her down there? And in this family, it's like everything is a big ass secret. I thought that I was just literally going to go check on my niece, check on my mom, and bring my stupid ass back to Philly, heal from top surgery, go back to work for a couple months, and then go back out so I could start bottom surgery. This this was my plan for my... When I transitioned December the 15th, 2020? Was it 20? No, it was 2021. When I transitioned... Was it 2021? No, it was 2020. I'm confused at this point. Yeah, it's 2020. December the 20th. No, December the 15th, 2020, right? That's when I transitioned. Um, I said I'm going to get top surgery. I was trying to get top surgery and bottom surgery before I even started taking testosterone. This is how serious I was. Once I came up to the conclusion, like, fuck everybody. I don't give a fuck. I take care of myself. I take care of my family. I mean, yeah, well, my family at the time. Uh, it's all about me. So this transition was supposed to be December the 15th. I started testosterone. Jan- uh, it was going to be uh, January. The, I think that date was like the 30th because I was already looking at top surgeons and all that and different surgeons for bottom surgery before I even got my appointment for testosterone. I was already doing my research. But December the 15th was like the actual day that I started to take in testosterone. So before that, I'm trying to get, I'm, I'm already looking into getting a surgery. So I found this one surgeon that I was going to do my top surgery. She, listen, if nothing else, she, was, I, she wasn't the best in the world, but she was fast as fuck. Like she was trying to get this thing moving. She like, you can pay cash. You can go, we can go through your insurance, however you want to carry it, bro. So I literally was about to get top surgery like in jan like the beginning of january or february like it was so fast gang but then i, w- I started doing my a little bit more research on her I- i'm in like a lot of trans groups on facebook and when i started mentioning the name um they was like yeah some of her patients was telling me no so i'm thinking like no they hating on me they don't want to see me shine i was i was tripping i was just in a rush to get this shit done but this, once I, I found another surgeon in Philly, I was like, bet. I was supposed to get my top surgery first in June, go till six weeks, go back to work, stack some more bread up, and then get my first stage of bottom surgery in December. That was the plan for me in this transition. 
That was my plan. I was like, bet, we rolling, we doing good. I couldn't believe it. I was so proud of myself. My mom knew that the day that I was getting top surgery, my mom knew because my godmom called her. But she like, Mumu, I don't think she really get it or understand. Like, my godmom didn't even know what was happening either. My godmom was like, listen, I'm here for you and all that. I was like, godmom. See, my godmom didn't know at the time I had a sugar mom. My, my sugar mom, I'm not going to lie, she was, she was rocking with me. She, she was getting on my nerves, but she was rocking. So I'm like, no, I'm sturdy. Like, I don't, like, I don't, I don't, I don't need you, Godma. I'm good. I know my mom. It's kind of weird, but like, it, it's kind of. I don't. I didn't know what was going on. So like, an hour before I went to go get surgery, my mom texted me and was like, yeah, your Godma called me. She's just telling me everything. You know, the name is really. She liked my name. She liked the name Camille and all that. She was like, uh, be careful. Make sure you call me as soon as you're done. Now. Mind you, I was already on testosterone for six months. So like, we haven't, I never had a conversation about my mom because it was always so much going on. And I'm like, do she know? Do she not know? Like she following me on social, like, so I don't fucking know. So long story short, um, I got the shit and then I was 30. Next thing I know, I'm going to, I'm healing. They telling me, yeah, this is weeks later. So I'm like, let me go. I, I even shut like I listen. This shit was crazy. I'm I'm in Florida. I'm gonna show y'all some clip. I'm down there. I'm not even supposed to be like having none of this out. Nothing. I'm not supposed to be in the sun. I'm down there in the sun, taking pictures, taking my wrap off, all this shit. And I'm trying to do this in the bathroom because my mom really not talking about it. So I'm really like trying to be happy and like not let her ruin my parade at the same time. At the same time, my niece was sick, so it's like it's a lot going on. You feel me? This is why y'all understand, like, even though, like, I'm still trying to, I'm trying to, like, be happy for myself and check on them at the same time, them two was, like, the blind leading the blind. They was trying to hold on so much to each other and be so strong for each other that they was kind of fucking each other up more. Because it's like, if y'all would just break away from each other and heal, maybe y'all would have been here a little bit longer. But I don't know what I'm talking about, so don't listen to me. Continue doing whatever y'all doing to make y'all happy because I'm over here. I'm about to get by. I'm about, I'm about to heal from this, get bottom surgery, and live my best life, find a new beat somewhere, and just rock out. Like, you know what I'm saying? You only live once. That's what was going through my mind, gang. So, here we are, February the 4th, a day after Saida's birthday. Rest in peace, mom. Rest in peace, Saida. Her birthday was yesterday. My mom's birthday was two weeks ago. I still don't have bottom surgery. And now, I don't even have no more testosterone. But... Everything happens for a reason. This was just to bring you up, bring me back to reality and be like, listen, you come first. You, if you're watching this, even if you're not uh, on testosterone, even if you're not trans, even if you don't even know a trans person, this has nothing to do with the trans. You come first, gang. And that sounds so cliche, but like you see all, I'm worrying about so like, I'm worrying about a lot of shit when now my body is about to go through some weird shit all because I was supposed to worry about myself first. And it wasn't that I was fucking right. It would give you like a heads up when you don't have no refills. And I'm about to, I'm about to say that because I felt like if they would have gave me a heads up uh, on a refill tip, because you can like call in. So it's like, it's never like I really be like, they give you the bottle and I'd be like, okay, it's one. Like they should, I feel like they should tell me when it's like I'm running low or I don't have that many refills left, and I feel like I can just kind of do this ahead of time. They don't tell me. Like, if I went to call, like, hey, I put my prescription in on, what, Wednesday? If I went to call, y'all just wasn't going to say nothing? Like, what the fuck? It's Friday now, bro. But long story so, long story short, you come first, all right? Like, don't be like me. I know that you got a lot of shit going on. You probably got a good heart, and, and unfortunately, the people that's out in this universe right now with good hearts we kind of get shitted on first like we, we get we get the shitty end of the stick the niggas that's out here capping and frauding they they time come to an end but right we we always get the shitty end of the stick so we already know we're gonna get the shitty end of the stick because we got a good heart so we got to take care of ourselves first because if you ain't well if i'm not well how the fuck is the rest of this tree going we mm, prosper you feel me so that's it, gang. Um, I don't have no more testosterone. I'm in a very good mood, though. I, I woke up and I was like, you know what? I'm not letting nothing stop me from whatever I want to do today. I don't give a fuck what it is. Like, 
I'm not stressing, I'm letting it go, and I'm just, I'm, I'm good. I got some sleep last night, something that I normally don't do. Um, my daughter's is, one of them will be here later. My niece is probably coming home today. She with her aunt because of Saida's birthday yesterday. So yeah, um, life is great, gang. It could be way better. I, if you're watching this video, I know shit is probably, it could be going worse for you right now. Or you could have just woke up and the shit just, whatever you was going through, the shit just works, right? Um, it's not that bad though. It's not. Because you still here, you still watching this video, you feel me? Like, as long as you not dead and you're not in jail, you got a chance to fix whatever fuck going on. That's how, that's my motive. That's how I've been get, would have been getting me through day by day, even through fucked up situations. If somebody, even if I'm having a word, the fuck, uh, a very fucked up day. I watch my mom look at these doctors in the face and say, knowing that she had a, uh, a sickness that was fucking killing her on the inside. I, look, I watched her day by day, day after day, look at them doctors and say, I'm great. How you, they be like, how you doing mama? Oh, I'm great. She ain't complaining at one time, gang. She was, she was literally dying, literally, day by day, day by day, day by day, day by day, more and more. She was slipping away and she ain't complaining. I watched my step pop do the same fucking thing. Listen, I don't want none of that shit. Take this shit out of me. If it's my time to go, I'm out of here. I see y'all later. The fuck? So it's not that bad. You might be not as strong as them. Sometimes I don't feel as strong as them. But here, everybody thinking my mom was just so weak and so like she had a good heart. It's just like, yeah, she had a good heart, but she was strong. She dealt with a lot of shit. The most shit that people would just be like, listen, I ain't dealing with this. Especially from a kid that ain't theirs. My mom dealt with so much bullshit. So it's like, I feel like that's where some of my strength come from. But even if you're not as strong as us, you will be if you continue to love on yourself and just kind of focus more on yourself. That's that's literally all I've been doing. That's, was, that's what has been getting me through day by day. I don't, you never see a whole army of people in these videos with me. You don't see 50 million comments, but you see me showing up on this joint when I can, every time I can, you feel me? Like, so you just kind of got to keep that same attitude. So yeah, I don't have no more tea. Um, I'm gonna definitely update y'all when I get some more, but Monday I'm gonna take y'all to the lab with me and see how see how they carry, see if they misgender me and all that. We we going we we uh we like family, gang. You feel me? Stay tuned. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed to the channel. I try to I'm trying to give y'all back to back Jones, but it was kinda it was easier before. So stay tuned. Stay locked in and I'll see you on the next video.